Elliot Kipchoge is the type of guy who is always happy and smiling. But right now, I think he has had enough of our sport and he is being tested to the absolute limit. Elid Kipchoge is the type of guy that is always smiling. He's always happy, laughing and bright. Even when he has a disappointing race, he will still manage to put on a smile and be kind to everyone around him. However, recently in a BBC interview, everything has changed. The stress and the pressure has got to him and in today's video we're going to be going over exactly what has happened and what led Eli Kipchoge to break down on camera during the interview because this is a one in a million. It's a very sad video I'm having to make and the real details are still fairly unknown but I'm going to be going over what I know and I will link my sources in the description. First, I wanted to go to the Kenya news articles as they, in my opinion, are the best places to go. So Kenya, obviously being Elliot's home, will know more about the details than other countries. So here we have an article saying, Eli Kipchoge has broken down into tears as he was being asked about the death of Kelvin Kiptum and if he is linked to it. Yep, that is crazy. I'm actually saying that right now. In an emotional interview, Kipchoge recounted how he's received death, I don't even want to say that, after being falsely linked to Kiptum's death. Now I myself had had comments on my channel stating this, so I have witnessed this firsthand. Around the time when Kelvin Kiptum passed, I got comment after comment which I had to go through and constantly delete every single day of people claiming that Elliot was somehow related to this or worse, made it happen himself. Now I wanted to add that a lot of car accidents do happen in Kenya, so this is something that obviously is happening very regularly, but to try and say Kipchoge orchestrated this is absolutely disgusting. My worst moment was when I tried to call my mum. She told me, just take care, and a lot has been going on, Kipchoge painfully recalled. The veteran marathon runner painfully recounted receiving several messages, including threats against his family. This is unbelievable. It's big news guys, BBC News Africa have also posted on it. What happened has made it so that I don't trust anybody. What is going on? This, I, I really was wondering why Elliot was keeping so quiet after the passing of Kelvin and now I understand why. This is something that has led me to believe that Elliot no longer likes our sport. He may not even race in the future after the Paris Olympics. He has been picked for the team. However, right now, he is saying that his training has been affected, his racing has been affected, and it's been a nightmare. On Tuesday, February the 13th, police from El Gayo Maraquet County affirmed that the marathon world record holder died as a result of a traffic accident amid questions over what transpired. Speaking to Citizen TV, KO South OCPD Abdullah Dahir said a review of the wreckage of the Toyota Premio that Kipton was driving showed that the front part was intact and the airbags did not deploy. Speaking at the accident scene, Abdullah pointed out that the airbags did not deploy because the impact was not on the bonnet slash bumper. Again, very, very empty theories that we cannot really rely upon as none of us were there during the point of this accident. Today's video isn't about that though as I have no right to speculate as I wouldn't dare with Kipton's family having gone through so much lately. It's none of my business what happened there other than to pay my respects to, you know, the passing of him and his family. Detectives from DCI visited three restaurants within Eldoret where Kelvin Kipton visited on the day that he had an accident. DCI recovered CCTV footage showing the last moments of the late world marathon record holder. Kipton's father, Samson Chariot, called for investigations, claiming that four unknown people visited his home a few days before Kipton's death. Again, were they looking for Kipton? These are all empty claims that we cannot go off but it is up to his father to investigate things fully and I hope that he finds some closure if he truly believes that this has something to do with someone else. 
Ellie Kipchoge, however, cannot be painted into this. There are no leads, facts, or evidence to suggest this, so I have to clear this up right now. If you comment any of this on my videos, you are going to be deleted from the comment section out of respect for not only Kiptum's family, but also Ellie Kipchoge's. One thing we have to remember is freedom of speech is important. However, when it's something this, this sensitive, then I'm afraid it does just become hurtful and instigative. Ellie Kipchoge was crying on a live BBC interview when he explained how Kenyans have wrongfully linked him to the death of Kelvin Kipton. Kenyans should apologize to Ellie Kipchoge and his family. Losing close to 90% of your friends due to unsubstantiated claims and trolling is the worst form of betrayal, I emphasize with Ellie Kipchoge. This is Pulse Sports Kenya, I don't know who wrote that quote, but again, this is crazy. And Elliot also said that his performance at uh, Tokyo was very disappointing because of his mentality having been affected and the trolls uh, going about messaging him and his family and threatening them, claiming that he was somehow related in the death of Kelvin Kipton. There are also a strong contingent of Kenyans who are also supporting Elliot, let's not forget. While there are people claiming that he is linked to it, there are also people who are helping Elliot through the tough times. There are people supporting him and his family, helping him train, helping him stay motivated, and that is very, very important because the truth will prevail. Obviously, there is a lot of corruption in sports, and a lot of sports are arguably rigged around the world. However, there is still something that people must understand is that unless they personally know what happened, then they cannot go and blurt their mouth on the internet. Everything I give is simply my opinions or it is facts I have read from other articles and sources. And if you don't like my opinions, then you don't have to listen to them. But my opinion on this is pretty firm. There is no evidence that Elliot has related to anything to do with the passing of Calvin Kiptum, so please stop mentioning this in my comment section and also leave Elliot and his family alone. While I don't believe anything will happen to Elliot, obviously we live in an unpredictable world where there are crazy people out there. For example, we had the bishop uh, in Croatia or Romania, I think called Mary or something. He was attacked by a man, uh, an extreme man who obviously failed to even do anything because he was so stupid. But um, basically, yeah, he went and attacked him and these things are a possibility. So. Elliot will need protection, security, bodyguards, and hopefully drivers that can actually drive, as the amount of bad drivers there are in Kenya is absolutely awful. It's horrendous. So many traffic accidents all around Iten and Eldoret. I don't know how on earth uh, their systems work out there and the pass system for driving licenses, but it seems like they just give any old person a license because there are so many accidents. Jeffrey Kamwara, David Radisha, uh, Elliot's even been involved in an accident before, and obviously Kelvin Kipton. Every single big Kenyan name has been involved in some mild or even severe traffic accident while on the roads of Eldoret or E10. It is very, very dangerous out there, and I believe a lot of drivers are unqualified to even be on the roads. It is worrying, and if you are an elite runner at a world-class level, you have to have security. You have to have security, good drivers, and also some kind of training network because you're not going to be at the top all by yourself. That's a famous quote, you cannot be the best if you don't have a team around you. 1% of me is nothing. However, 1% of the team is like 100% of me, is roughly me quoting what Elliot has said a couple of years ago around the Ineos 159 project, which he did. So, I mean... <laughs> I don't even know where to start. I can't think properly. My vocal cords are gone. It's a very emotional video uh, to watch Elliot just breaking down like that. I can't show you the video itself because of copyright, but I just have to say that Elliot is going through a dark time right now because really in the face of things, running doesn't matter to him if the safety of his, you know, kid and his kids and his um, family is in jeopardy. He will stop running and competing if it means the safety of his family. So you know, these are un the unprecedented times. Elliot's health and fitness has been greatly impacted by all of this. Elliot's family may have been targeted by haters and theorists. 
please remain factual and open-minded some of these are my notes that i've put down uh, in a bit of a rush i've spelt health wrong <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, this is something that we have to remember is Elliot's training and his mindset has been affected by this, which is probably why he ran quite badly at Tokyo and obviously why he's not had the best of build-ups for the Olympics. He's been very down and depressed and quiet. He hasn't posted much to social media. Um, I believe he's had a lot of comments on his Instagram from Kipton fans and crazy theorists saying that he was involved. A lot of hateful comments again i don't know if his team are deleting them or if they are just uh turning off the comments section which is i think a feature you can use on instagram when it gets that bad you sometimes have no choice but to remove everyone's freedom of speech thread on your website because of these fools and idiots and trolls you can't you know monitor the comment section 24 7 and a lot of these people just create bot accounts multiple accounts or they will actually just sit there all day spamming through the comments which i have had myself i've had a fair share of haters from other running channels making silly videos about me because they get jealous that i get way better views than them and make you know work harder on my videos and make more often posts uh you know that's just a lot of people are jealous and they are going to target you with videos and comments and spam and troll accounts um but when you meet them in person well you won't because they're pussies they're wimps they're going to run away and they wouldn't go to Elliot's face and say that. Well, one, they wouldn't be able to get to his face because of his team. And two, they wouldn't have the balls to do that. This has affected his Paris Olympic build-up badly. Kipchoge went silent when Kipton passed. I think people need to calm down with stupid theories. Pro athletes need to protect themselves and get actual drivers. This has affected his Paris Olympic build-up badly. Well, I've been over that. Kipchoge did go silent and I believe that is for one reason and it's because of the amount of hate and backlash he got instantly after the passing of Kiptum. However, I do think it was a bad decision for him not to instantly come out with a RIP message. I searched all of his social media and I made a video about this when Kiptum's death was announced and I said I couldn't find anything about uh, Kipchoge saying RIP or uh, thoughts and condolences with his family so I, I think I don't know if he did eventually do one but in the 24 or so hours after the announcement of Kiptum's death he wasn't posting anything from what I could see unless I missed it uh, which I apologize so to me that was suspicious and a bit confusing but now we know why because he was getting all the threats and hate uh, as soon as it was announced I think people need to calm down with stupid theories. Yes, again, if you can't prove your theories, leave the investigations to the investigations team, to his father, to his family and his friends and his, you know, colleagues and close relations. They will bring justice to him. It is up to them to fulfill the duty of getting closure, not us, because we are just here as members of the public to offer our respect and condolences. So don't jump to stupid conclusions allow the family to search if they wish to search these theories and entertain the thoughts and the theories pro athletes need to protect themselves and get actual drivers again time and time again we're seeing so many accidents this is true it's not a way to be disrespectful to what happened with kiptum but it is all too common now and it's making me very angry because a lot of these greats that had amazing careers ahead of them are getting severely injured or they are actually being killed in these accidents think about it we had a guy that was going to most definitely break two hours in the official marathon and it was all ended by a accident on a road in a probably old van being driven by somebody who maybe isn't the best of skilled drivers so again and someone hit them so you can't control other drivers on the road if they drive into you it's uh, it's something you can't control you, you need your seatbelt on and maybe you can learn some defensive driving courses but other than that it's very dangerous out there you know so be careful take precautions so guys this is just my brief addressing of this news i don't really have anything else to say i just think it's disgusting that kipchoge's been driven to the point of tears on a bbc interview you know, Elliot hasn't shown this type of emotion ever, I don't think. Even when he broke two in the Ineos, he didn't really cry that much. I think he had a few tears, but he was mainly happy. So, comment down below what you think, guys. Um, and please, stop giving him hate and uh, coming up with stupid theories. 
thank you and please subscribe to my channel and leave a like i'll be uploading as usual tomorrow so hopefully this is the last time i cover this kind of drama as it's just disgusting <laughs>